Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this new segment of MedCast, your gateway to the new medical updates and the reply to the rumors we have in the society. Today, we are pleased again to have the graduates of the greatest city of the world, which is University of Liverpool, Dr. Rawan El Khwetim, which is graduate of University of Liverpool and specialized in pediatric dentistry in addition to the special need dentistry. Welcome, Dr. Rawan, again. Thank you. We are so it's pleased to have you again. Pleasure and mind. hopefully we can have you more and more because you have Inshallah. a very good speech actually and Thank even you. your major is very important to our society. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Rawan, let's talk about general, uh, generally about the primary uh, teeth of the children. So how important it is to keep their, the, their primary teeth healthy as much as possible? Well, as you all know and hear mm -hmm. that most people here in the society think that primary teeth are not important. Mm -hmm. baby, baby teeth are going to fall out anytime. So no need to treat these teeth. Yes. This is a myth because primary teeth plays an important role in terms of growth of the child, uh, overall general health, because imagine if the child is having dental pain. Mm -hmm. This could cause problems. Even the child won't have a really good sleep. He might miss his schools, exams, because he's in dental pain. Yes. He had complications from this infection from a tiny tooth mm -hmm. because they've neglected the tiny cavity when it started. So they are really important. Mm -hmm. Also, in terms of language, speech, uh, the child, overall confidence, you know, now in schools, mm -hmm. children are not children like before. Yes. So uh, that's why they are really important. Mm -hmm. Uh, they need to be looked after just like your adult teeth. So not to ignore because they will direct actually your permanent teeth when it's when it comes to uh, changing dentition. Yes. So if, for example, a child lost his teeth early in life and then what's going to happen to the permanent teeth? Unfortunately, they will, misle mis mis will be misled. Mm. So they won't really come uh, in the right direction and this child will have complications. They need to visit the orthodontist to fix and align their teeth in the future. Yes. So while prevention was very easy and uh, very straightforward, mm. prevention is always better than cure. That's yes, why definitely. I always stress on prevention. Definitely. Now, let's let's get that point into more details. And I need mm -hmm. uh, to explain some point that some parents might believe as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I need you to make me correct, actually. Mm -hmm. Because they think if they go to the dentist, they are only looking for the teeth. But I think and I believe you you look for the overall oral health, mm -hmm. even like looking for the tongue, looking for yes. every part of, of the of the mouth. It's Is not it like? just the teeth. Yeah. We look at the jaws. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, the child will have problems with uh, jaw, for example, that I can predict and tell the parents that this child have malocclusion. Mm -hmm. So in the future, he might need, for example, surgical intervention. Mm -hmm. In this age, if they have some crowding in their dentitions, uh, their teeth are not uh, well aligned. Mm -hmm. We can do early intervention to prevent even orthodontic treatment in the future. Yes. So it's not about counting teeth, it's not about cavities, it's, it's about the overall health of the child. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I will see a child will have multiple ulcers in the mouth, for yes, example. definitely. And they don't know, they will tell me that it always comes and goes, we don't know what's the reason. I will educate them, for example, they think that even uh, taking a blood test for the child is not important. Mm -hmm. Because I'm professional and I know that sometimes medical issues will have oral manifestations in the mouth, I can direct them to the right blood test that yes. they should. For, uh, I have multiple like uh, patients where they had like uh, low uh, iron mm -hmm. and that's why this child was having multiple ulcers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they had a, a, a viral infections and they, didn't, they don't know. It was very obvious inside the mouth even b before the child having any other symptoms. So it's not about just counting teeth it's yes. about the overall health Definitely. sometimes the child will have a bleeding gum mm -hmm. consistently and they don't know the issue mm -hmm. and it's sometimes very really Is it especially serious while while brushing the teeth sometimes uh, they, they will tell you uh, it's not even about brushing it comes and goes even when touching mm -hmm. and this like an alarm because this could, could be related to something really serious with the blood so uh, your role is to educate them direct them and to show them why teeth and oral health is really important because it's the main gate for the overall body because a tiny infection in the mouth could reach the brain could reach the heart yes so we need to take it seriously as well as uh, you know the easy access of the dentist nowadays 
It is will, very easy. We are you, 24 hours. Yes, and we will <laughs> prevent you uh, actually from looking for the diagnosis in Google as well. Because yes. some people are Googling Please it. Please don't go. <laughs> <laughs> and then they are sometimes frightened when, when they read something With the, very serious. Exactly, yeah. Uh, one of the important things that you look after is uh, the health of the bones, as sometimes you check the vitamin D levels yes, regarding if indeed. you have something related to the teeth. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you discover that there is something that is bigger than only an issue related to the teeth. Exactly. So uh, also uh, the question is how, because you have mentioned the the term mm -hmm. cavities uh, mm -hmm. so often so how does cavities uh, or the tooth decays uh, can be formed inside the mouth well dental cavities or dental care dent, before it's a cavity it's a dental caries mm -hmm. the main disease mm -hmm. uh, it comes it's a multifactorial to be honest when we have the host which is the tooth child is not brushing mm -hmm. so we have multiple bacteria as you know inside our mouth millions mm -hmm. of bacteria and we have the uh, nutrients, which is the candies, chocolate, biscuit, chips, all of the child having between all the food that exactly. And we we don't have really a resource of fluoride, which, mm -hmm. which is the toothpaste, because most of them are not really brushing, especially in holidays. Mm -hmm. They will be very sleepy. Uh, they're not really sleeping on time, like for school. So these factors, when it comes together easily the child will have a cavity within two months it mm -hmm. will start with white spots that's what i always educate the parents if you see an early sign of cavities or caries they will tell me what are the early sign doctors it's basically having a white spots uh, on the teeth especially la when they are not brushing you will look at the uh, gingival level when the gum is attached to the uh, crevice of the tooth you will find an early band of white color mm -hmm. which is the early sign early demineralizations this can be prevented if they for example visited the dentist they did the cleaning they applied the fluoride varnish we can arrest this and remineralize the hard uh, tissue however if it's cavitated already we have the hole no we need to treat the hole either with uh, just uh, cleaning and putting, for example, a plastic filling or uh, silver caps mm -hmm. for children. Or if it's really bad, we might need to take the tooth or knock the tooth out. So from a tiny things to more serious. Mm -hmm. So uh, they need to be more serious about well, it. Well, I, I like the phrase that you have seen, uh, you have mentioned before, which is like the earliest the intervention is the better mm -hmm. for the overall health yeah. of the children. Mm -hmm. So what are, uh, I know you have mentioned briefly the treatment options you got, but mm -hmm. uh, with a bit more details, what are the treatment options you have for the for uh, prevention advices? The point I'm asking the, that question again, because uh, mm -hmm. some parents might believe that you may not or n not be able to transfer the patient to another dentistry specialist. Is that right or not? No. I mean, uh, if the patient is, needs extra treatment for something, you will not refer him to an orthodontist or a prosthodontist or something like that? Alhamdulillah, in Kuwait, we, we are in the, for example, talking about the government. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we have a multi-center when we do uh, a specialized dental center with mul multiple specialities. Mm -hmm. We work uh, as a colleague as all a together. Multi -team learning, multi yeah. Yes, interdisciplinary yeah. team, mm -hmm. we call it. So if I'm working with a case that I, I believe that they need, for example, orthodontic treatment, mm -hmm. I can easily reach my colleague on the orthodontic department and the child will have, and the parents will have a consultation. They will know exactly if the child is needing any further uh, treatment, where to go mm -hmm. and when to go, at what, at what age, because some people think that ortho treatment has to be after the age of 13 That's and 14. The That's the no, point, yeah. now we advise every child to be assessed between the age of seven to nine. Mm -hmm. If they have any signs of malocclusion or they will be benefit from any early intervention, especially when the child have the crossbite, mm -hmm. when they're not really biting on the correct way, yes. it can be prevented easily when they are uh, really young. Mm -hmm. Rather than waiting when the child gets older and then trying the ortho treatment where it gets complicated and they have to lose permanent teeth in order to correct the crossbite. Which might be too late. Exactly. Yeah. And if the child, for example, have problems in terms of impaction, uh, they have teeth that are not coming because of there is like something on the way, extra teeth, or if they have some cyst or something serious in the bone, then I can call my uh, colleague the Maxfax oral surgeon. We can formulate a treatment plan. That's why visiting the profession who are really 
uh, specialized for this uh, child as a pediatric dentist will know how, where to guide you, yes. where to direct you. To We're not miss uh, an easy things on the X-rays. Yeah. <laughs> so it's either it's either you treat the thing if you can. Yes, or, or uh, I will seek to go for to the consultation and, and advice. One yes. more last question, if mm -hmm. you don't mind. Yes, I have. I so what are, I know there is no positive impact on that. So what are the negative impacts if they leave that tooth untreated? If they left teeth, for mm -hmm. example, cavitated teeth, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier in the previous podcast, uh, they will have infection mm -hmm. that could spread spread anyway anywhere in the face or it, sometimes it gets very serious yes. when it got inside your neck and then they will have a leduc angina and then it's really serious condition that could lead even to child death mm -hmm. so not to neg neglect a tiny tooth especially when you see the sign of swelling it's like a pimple inside the mouth these signs if you noticed it take the child directly to the dentist, you can prevent even infection from getting inside his body, inside the bloodstream, mm -hmm. because it can go anywhere, their brain, their heart. So it's very serious. That's for dental cavities. In terms of malocclusion, sometimes when they have the crossbite, that could cause even problems for the upper teeth. Mm -hmm. That could cause a problem in terms of fracturing the upper teeth. That could cause problem to the gum. They will have recession, especially for the lowers. So it's really serious mm -hmm. and you can prevent it easily with a preventative measure and early interception so not to miss these things okay now the, the the point is some parents might believe that if that decay is happening to a milk teeth not a permanent one we can leave them until that milk teeth falls by no, itself because the infection will go directly to the permanent tooth if there is a swelling or uh, an abscess it will spread anyway mm -hmm. The new teeth will come, as, and I always warn them, especially if I'm taking the teeth out, I will give them all the consequences of this. And uh, this, for sure, would cause a problem to the permanent tooth. It will erupt. They will be surprised with the color with the new tooth. Yeah. It's either yellow yeah. or have a like a, a brown discoloration. Sometimes even the eruption and development of this tooth will be arrested because of the infection of the primary tooth. So it is serious. Even if when they have a, uh, a child who fall down, for example, and knocked or, for example, touch the baby teeth, mm. but nothing happened. They, no, they didn't fracture or anything, but there's some bleeding around the gum. They won't take the child directly to the dentist. Yes. They think it's normal. Yeah. However, this could cause, especially if the child is under the age of three, that could cause a really serious impact on the permanent teeth. They will come either with white spots or brown uh, discoloration, we call it hypoplasia, or uh, they will have like uh, arrested development or uh, other complications. Or uh, the other things, by time, they will notice that the child teeth will change in color mm -hmm. and they will come to you only when the child reached the black or gray discoloration. Yes. And then when you ask them about a trauma, they will say, yeah, maybe they were playing, they're crawling. And that happened three years ago. Mm -hmm. Then I will tell them, unfortunately, the nerve is dead now. We cannot do anything. If there is a problem, we need to take these baby teeth out. So it is serious. Okay. And they need to be educated in terms of advices. Because if you, a child encounters trauma on the seven to, it's first seven to nine days, they need to be on soft food. They mm -hmm. cannot really bite really hard yes. because that could cause multiple trauma as well. Mm -hmm. So these will be provided by the professional, not by Google. Now, as, <laughs> as you are talking now, I'm still thinking about the stress when I visit the dentist So because I'm still having the, that impact since I was a kid. And I wish you were there uh, yeah. instead of that the doctor was on that time. And, you and know what? I had a very bad experience when, that when I was then a child. Then how did you choose to be That's a dentist? That's why <laughs> I chose to be a pediatric dentist just to change the, the idea fact we are living the fact, yes. that's very great and also that's a very good point to end up with our segments today unfortunately we have reached to the end of our segments hopefully we can have you again Dr. Salah thank you very much Dr. Rawan sorry <laughs> Our dear viewers, we have reached to the end of our segment with Dr. Rawan and the team. Hopefully we can see you again with another healthcare professional. Until that time, see you later. Bye.